able to share your personal protocol that you use for staying fit and healthy? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I'm uh, uh, doing caloric restriction. I'm doing the the six eighteen protocol. So six mm-hmm. hours of feeding and eighteen hours of uh, 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 fasting. Um, I'm trying to exercise uh, every day, and uh, I'm trying to cross exercise. So some people, a lot of people, the example of running, a lot of us running, and that's it. And I think that you need to activate the majority of the muscle in your body. So I'm doing, I like cycling. So I'm doing cycling every other day. And the other day I'm doing some weightlifting and some yoga. And I think that uh, uh, working a lot of balance like yoga, it's very important for us because if you look at the elderly, uh, mm-hmm. high reason of uh, uh, um, death is basically fall. You fall, you, you break a, a, a bone and then it will be very hard for you to recover. And there is a lot of evidence that uh, every year when we are getting older, we are losing uh, muscle mass. So it's much harder to build muscle at the age of 50 than at the age of 40. But at the age of 60, it's much harder than the age of 50. So we need to work harder to gain the same amount of muscle that we used to have a decade before. Um, I'm uh, uh, trying to take a, a, a supplement specific for the markers that are not optimized for me right now. For example, for me right now, I have an issue with uh, vitamin D and B12. So I'm taking vitamin D and B12 supplementation. And I'm uh, uh, working on uh, nutrition with uh, uh, specifically for the uh, markers that are not fully optimized for me. For me currently is glucose. So I'm uh, uh, eating a specific uh, diet uh, uh, to optimize that. I have also some uh, uh, not very high, but some inflammation. So I'm uh, adjusting the diet for that. So I'm trying to... um, eat the dog, the dog food that I'm preaching to eat. So I'm a, 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 and I'm changing it every quarter based on the, a, a, the blood test that I'm receiving from Insta Tracker. So one question on that. So you, I assume you've been using Instant Tracker for a number of years, like many years. Do you reach like a steady state? Although it sounds from your recent, from your description that you don't, but do you reach like a steady state? It's like, I know these are the things I need to do. These are my markers. And if I keep doing them, then I'm pretty much going to stay flat. Do you see that? Yeah. Yeah, I don't. And I don't think that anyone sees it because we are so complex machine that every time you have a different challenge and the, mm-hmm. uh, um, we actually ask our data scientists to look at uh, our uh, uh, population, try to see whether we can find anyone that is completely optimized with all the uh, 43 blood biomarkers. And someone that tested with all the 43, we haven't found anyone that is uh, 100% optimized. There are a few that are having the uh, one or two that are not optimized, but nobody is optimized with all of them. And what we also see that is changing with time. Uh, for example, uh, in the uh, a few months ago, your uh, B12 is a uh, uh, low or uh, D is low. Then you fix that, but then you got a new issue. Um, so I don't think that it's something that you can come and say, "Hey, I will uh, test it a couple of times and then uh, stop, and that's okay." It's actually a, a circle of continuing to do it and do it, and every time adjusting based on what. Uh, what are the issue with uh, your body? It's very similar with the car that you take it to the technician every 5,000 miles and the technician uh, look at his computer and the computer telling the technician what to do. And then next time you look again on the uh, computer and it might take him to uh, tell him to do different things. So it's the same here. We need the diagnostic and we need to find what are the issue and we need to optimize it. So, I mean, it may be impossible to optimize all of them. I mean, it's a bit like running. It's like if you don't do any yeah. running, you have some things. But if you do lots of running, then other things go wrong. Go and, and you just can't get all of them optimized. Exactly. It's a, I think that it's like, it's like a game in a way. Try to optimize the majority of them. But I, I think that it's, a, it's very hard because you optimize one, then suddenly you have a deficit in the other one. So there is a lot of crosstalk between all of those markers. And it's a, very hard to optimize all of them. But do your best and uh, take care of uh, the most important machine that you have in the best way that you can. I think, you know, like Inside Tracker, it's, it's a great way of doing that because uh, you need the big data to, to be able to munge it all and, and come out with these recommendations. So thank you so much.
uh, for joining today, Dr. Blander. Can you tell people where they can find out more about your work and Inside Tracker? Yeah, you can come to insidetracker.com and uh, basically uh, learn more about Inside Tracker. You can also find us on uh, the social media, Instagram and uh, Facebook and uh, LinkedIn and uh, YouTube. And uh, uh, one more point that I want to mention is that we, because of our fascinating fascination for longevity, we started a podcast that called Longevity by Design. And in this podcast, we are interviewing a, a leader in longevity research, such as David Sinclair and, and George Church and uh, uh, Matt Camberlein and the uh, other. So uh, we already have around 14 uh, leaders that we interviewed, and we are planning to interview more. So if they want to learn more about longevity, they can also come there. Okay, yeah, excellent. We will definitely link to that in the description. Okay, so Dr. Blander, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Richard. It was a pleasure.